Alrighty, mates, welcome back, and let's go ahead and start writing some code, shall we? So, Redux, how the heck does this thing work? All right, what is the first thing that we need to make? Well, my guess is this big store right here. So what does this say? This is pretty much just one big JavaScript object that stores all of the data for your entire application. Simple enough. So how do we go ahead and actually make this thing well what we do is we need to import a function called create store big surprise there from the redux module so import create store and this is in the module redux so we already installed that should be in your node modules and there you go now one other thing that i probably just want to mention real quick you see whenever we import this and this then this was kind of generic but then we imported create store and we surrounded it with curly braces why the heck did we do that well you know how whenever you import a module you can use things from those modules well if you just want to use like one variable or one function from it then you can wrap it in curly braces and what this saves you from doing is instead of writing var create store equals redux dot create store since this was such a common technique, instead of having to make a separate variable and transfer it over and then you had the ability to use it, whenever you wrap it in these curly braces, you're pretty much doing that in one big shebang. So right now already, we can just use create store and just use it like a function. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So I'm going to make this a constant and anytime you're pretty much using a variable and you're only going to be making it one time and not changing its value at all. You probably want to make it a constant. And the reason for this is because first of all, if you try to change it later on, then you're going to throw error. So it ensures that you don't accidentally change the value. And also it helps with uh, performance. So const store is going to be equal to create store. Now again, this store is all of the data for your entire application. Now this is actually going to be changing, but we are not changing it in code. We're not going to say something like store equals something new or else that would throw an error. If you guys want to see how that works, then just stick around. It's actually pretty interesting. Now the store is all of the data for your application, but how does it know what data it's supposed to store. I think that's what it stands for, data storage, by the way, just between me and you. All right, let's look at this handy diagram. So the data that gets saved in the store is determined by things called reducers. So a reducer is pretty much just like I said. It's a function that says what data we're supposed to save in our store. Now. Whenever we make our application, we're going to have a bunch of different parts of data. We're going to need to save a bunch of users. We're going to need to save a bunch of videos, a bunch of songs or ages of people. Who knows? Whatever the heck we want to save on our website. Now, instead of just making one big function to kind of manage all of this, what we do is we break it up into separate reducers. So we're going to have a movies reducer, a users reducer, users reducer, users reducer. Can make a rap song out of that. So since we're going to have all these reducers, let's just go ahead and make a new directory so we can kind of organize everything. So this directory is just going to be named reducers. And by the way, this application that I'm making, is going to be really easy. Um, all I'm going to have is a bunch of users names at the top. And then whenever you click one, it displays your profile or details below. So again, it's a really kind of dumb application. You're probably not gonna make millions of dollars from it, but to explain Redux, it's perfect and I can pretty much explain all the concepts. So that's why I decided to go with this. Anyways, moving on. Inside this reducers directory, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new JavaScript file and I'm just gonna name it reducer users. So again, inside here, what I'm gonna have is a function that returns the part of the application responsible for storing the users. 
So later on, whenever we delete users, whenever we add new users, whenever we change a user's name, this function is going to be used. So that's all we're doing. And again, since we're going to want to include this in another part of our application, we actually need to export it. So export default function. So all this function is going to do is return an array of users. That's it. How easy is that? So I'm going to hit return an array. And now I just have to type in a bunch of users and let me actually pause the video because I don't think you guys want to see me take 10 minutes typing in users. <laughs> 